Dating sucks in 2022. Agree or disagree? Let's just start with that. So let, let's let's start with Cheeky on this. Cheeky, do you agree or disagree on this? Uh, for sure. Uh, fortunately for me, I don't got to worry about it. But I see the prospects. They really not prospects. They just kind of like things you look at. So yeah, no, it's trash out here. It's trash for sure. Okay, so Jedi, look, <laughs> Jedi with the glasses, bro. Yo, you're killing me, bro. All right, Jedi, what you think, Jedi? Um, in terms of Spanish, I know my Spanish is not, you know, uh, might not be perfect, but I think the term was it called La Basura? That means what? Trash. Basura, Basura yeah. means trash. It is. It's absolutely trash. Um, again, same thing with Chiki. I don't have to worry about that. Um, but I will say for people in our generation, um, y'all screwed. Damn. Okay. Cam, what do you think, Cam? Um, okay, me personally, I have not had a hard time dating personally. Um, I have a hard time getting married because I'm not married yet. Um, but as far as dating, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think it's trash. I think that um, people just like, <laughs> what? No, Chiki's <laughs> laughing because, because you said, because you're not married yet. That's what Chiki laughing about. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't think it's trash. Girls will be girls, man. <laughs> Subtle as ever. <laughs> oh, it's just the truth. <laughs> Listen, Cam knows Anyways, what's up. I, I don't think it's trash trash um necessarily. I just think people, you know, like pick wrong. Um I think there's I think there's options. I honestly think that um that men have a harder time dating than women because I just think women have like I think women have a lot a, a lot of different men to choose from and a lot and a lot of different men that they will be like satisfied with. Um but men I think that like as far as the picking is go for women like I don't know. I like since I talk to women and like my friends and they confide in me, I can see why men would have a hard time dating because these women just, you know, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm one of them. We have a hard time. We have a hard time like really um, being under a man. And so but I think that it's not like completely trash. I don't think so. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to have to agree with the guys. This shit is garbage. Okay, it's trash. <laughs> it's a dumpster fire. <laughs> I, I can't think of it, you know, enough terms to describe what it is, what it's like, you know, so-called, you know, dating in 2022. But I think probably for me, the reason, and I, I'm curious if you guys agree, would agree with this, but for me, the reason why I think it sucks, it's, it's not that it's hard to date, but it's hard to date intentionally, like with intentions. So in other words, like if you just trying to like just be out here and be a hoe um, on both sides, I mean, it's really um, it's really not that hard to just be a hoe. But if you're trying to find a wife or a husband or, you know, um, like basically just honestly, I'll even take this a step down. Right. As much as for me, I really am just looking for marriage. Right. But even if somebody who's really, truly looking for like a long term committed relationship, you know, even if we take marriage out of it, like something serious where both sides take it seriously, even there, I think it's, it's you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a dumpster fire. Um, so to me, I think that's what it is. Um, it's a shit show specifically for people who actually are not just trying to like, just sleep around, you know what I'm saying? Or just, um, do, do you guys, do you guys agree with that? Or do you guys well, have a different? For sure. I don't, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Well, me, I, I don't know. I just find this like this question hard because I don't, I don't date in another generation. Like, I don't know what it, what it was like. Per, I really don't know what it was like to date before people got married more often. But I'm not sure if it was hard to find a maid or if it was because of. I, I just don't know if I would. I, I, I just don't know how it was back then, personally. So I, that's why I don't. I, I can't really compare this time to another time. I mean, you've never talked to any like. Let's just say so-called OGs, Cam. I mean, my my mother's generation, even my grandmother's generation, they had a hard time dating as well, finding finding, you know, someone that they'll spend the rest of their lives with. So, 
Nah. Not if not not like nah. Uh, y'all ain't ready for the stream. I'm telling y'all right now. You yeah, see, <laughs> you are not ready. This show about to take a turn, and then some. I think so, um, I think what she's ahead, saying. Yeah, I think what she's saying. You know, may have some truth to it because there's there's a saying nothing's new under the sun, but I think we'd be a little, you know, naive to think that women aren't the most sexually openly sexually promiscuous that they've ever been. Um, women are our mentality is very blatant and open than it's ever been. Um, the necessity for men if, as far as finances has been as freeing as it's ever been. Um, there's a lot of factors that they didn't have that I would I would you know argue makes this a lot harder, right? You you this is the most amount of women talking so reckless about men and two men without any real repercussions because back then i guess you could hit them i don't know what you could do there was something you know that i seen before from um j uh, when jr had brought it up there used to be a, a level of discipline for women they signed up for it you know and uh they signed up for it with their husband and they were uh, with their husband and if they got out of line they could get a spanking or some form of discipline i don't know what it was i don't know i forgot what it's called but we, we can't have that today. Their ego is bigger than it's ever been. They're entitled more than ever. That's because they're uh, constantly uh, they're constantly uh, valid uh, being validated by so so many different forms of things. You're getting so validation from social media, simps in real life, not in not on the internet, but off the internet as well. Like it's hard to prove somebody's wrong when they think they're a god. And then the moment they get humbled, they got to realize that you're just as human as anybody else. But the problem is we live in a society where everything is not equal, but I can't think of a more egalitarian system right now besides what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. All right. I can't tell you, Cam, you can't drive because you're a woman. And if you talk out of line, I can't just slap you in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Certain, I, there, there's just... There's a lot of different things. Like there's there's a lot of differences. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You know, but it goes back to, you know, the the topic of free will. It's like, you know, women today are the most free, most liberated group of women in the face of the planet, and yet you're the most miserable. And yet we can tell that because how loud you are. Like term I mean in terms of well, what's being heard. Are you saying to be the most vocal? Just because you might be the loudest doesn't mean that narrative might not necessarily be true. Um, so like uh when we're hearing the things about when women complain about what the issues in dating relationships is see like, again, we're more freer people, even on men, on men too, is that there's no sense of structure, no order uh, anymore. And like going back to Cheeky was talking about, which was a uh, um, discipline. Right. And thing, but thing about that is that if we, you know, if we're with this freedom, if we cannot restrict you of your choices. We have to blame, you know, as men and women, it's like, what are your intentions of actually dating lean to the relationship? And you're wondering why, you know, people, you know, have uh, so, uh, like, difficult um, choosing people because they don't even know themselves. You know, why do you think people's expectations are shallow? Because their self-awareness is shallow, right? A lot of people don't know what they really want. And then when they think they know, it's actually, like, they're lying to themselves, thinking, like, oh, this is what I, like, this is what I need. No, it's what you want, not necessarily what you need. That's why everything that's presented to you is always something lacking because you're not prioritizing the things that actually valuable in relationships you know uh this is uh, like for what you want as a person to be in uh in terms of marriage and relationship whatever it might be that that's really i, I see what it is yeah i mean i see what, what both of you guys are saying um but it's like the only reason why i'm i i i'm pushing back just a little bit because the people who are getting divorced are the older folks, you know, that's why the divorce rates are going so high. It's not, it's not solely, or it, I'm, I'm not sure like the age group, but I'm pretty sure um, it's not our generation because we're only in our twenties. Um, but what, what I would say is that, you know, things were different for a woman. That's why I think that it depends on who you ask about the dating, about the dating, if, if it was better or not. Cause I feel like men will say it's, it's worse now, but I think women will say it's better because they have, you know, more options. They have more autonomy and more liberation. And I, I, I think women actually like that because if they didn't, then they would not, you know, fight for it, fight for it, fight so yeah. hard for it. Yeah, I'm so glad yeah. you said that. Yeah, I'm you, so glad yeah. you said that. 
hold up, hold up, Jedi, hold up, Cam. You sound insane right now with what you just said. Talking about hold up, you just said, do you not do you not hear these women all the time complaining about where did the good men go? Like the women are struggling, okay? And that's struggling with a K, all right? It's not with a T. Like these women are struggling out here. I, I'm not sure what world you live in where you think women actually think that. Now, you might be talking about what women say, but guess what? That's why we don't listen to what women say. If, you, if you're talking about what women expect, what female experiences today in dating, they're struggling. But so well, I mean, like, we're, we're both struggling, but okay, I but think you don't that... shift the goal. Hold up. Don't shift the goalpost. I, I was, I'm focused on the women right now because you okay. just made that statement about the women. And I'm just telling you, you sound insane based off of what we're hearing from the women and also just by looking at like how these women are living. That, that I, don't well, sound I, insane. That's not that's not necessarily true, because this is why I said that I'm so glad she said that. Because what it revealed is in terms of what uh in terms of indoctrination in today's modern society that women are trying to believe at, like even with people, let's just take women out of it as people. We're being told that what we feel is actually you know good for us is not. You settling down, you actually, you know, understanding of vetting people properly and maybe taking a, like a longer time to vet people in a relationship. That that's not necessarily true. Like if someone's not on your program or anything, just leave. It's just like we come so fickle, right? So you're talking about how people are so um are uh, uh are being divorces later on because people are the now in this culture realizing, wait, I can leave whenever I want. But they're not leaving in base of, oh, this is actually an unstable relationship. It's all, oh, it's just getting too hot in the kitchen, so now I can leave. But like, it's just, you're still your home. Doesn't mean, just because a kitchen is, is um, it might be uh, high temperature, doesn't mean it's gonna go in flames, but it will if you don't treat it, you know, and t- uh, tackle that problem. So a lot of people are running away when things get tough. Therefore, nothing is actually really more or stable because we're not actually fighting for the things we really want in our relationships. And then again, we're sold this false narrative of the things that we want is what we need. And that, that's why I mentioned before, it's like we're being believed that some of the things that is valuable in relationships is not, it's just fickle. So the things what you're saying, there, I do believe what Cam is coming from. There are women who believe that because that's what they've been told to. So you have that narrative cycle over and over again. That becomes your reality because you believe it. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I think that women today are happy to a degree hear me out before you start going nuts the reason why i say that is because very often women in their younger years take advantage of the things that they can it's only till things start to decline honestly like the women that i hear really complain about dating are usually 25 and up but when i hear like 22 year olds they on college campuses and stuff like that they just dating around that's that's typically what I hear. And, they, and then they complain about the people that they choose. But as far as like the mentality of women today, it's not as serious. Like they don't think about marriage until it's a little too late. Like I always hear older, like when I say older, I would say my age and up, like 20. I would say anywhere from 18 to 24, most women really are self-centered and they're just doing whatever they think is good for them. But the moment they hit 25, 26, and they graduate college and they start to realize your circle, your social circle is not the same as it was in college, they don't realize that you don't have the same pool that you did beforehand. Cause they don't, they graduate thinking, oh man, I could just meet somebody. But real life in college is two different places. It is. Okay. I give you that. that and, when they, and then when they leave, that. Cause that's, yeah. cause that's the problem. They, the, a lot of the times, a lot of these women that are happy, quote unquote, and I put quotations around that because they live in a bubble. Mm-hmm. When you're a college student, unless you've lived outside of college and just been, been through life, you really think that this is life. And I can tell you from experience, cause I, I, went, I went to the military first and came into college and people were stressing over the test. And I'm like, cram. <laughs> have you almost like have you ever have you been in charge of people's lives before no but that's their bubble and then when they leave that bubble which is around like i said age 24 to 25 that's when that happiness starts to decline because the things that they think or the perception that they had was so entrapped into a zone that was not real and then so reality I, hit i so i got y'all right so be, hold up before i make my point i just want to sh- i, I want to show y'all something real quick Okay, I want to show y'all something. We're cooking now. Hold up. 
Hold up, y'all. Uh, let's see. And get the likes up, ladies and gentlemen. This is valuable content. Don't want. I want to show y'all something real quick. So you know. Oh my god. Said, so listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Somebody said. Somebody said. Uh, was talking about Kim's. Uh, this is. Tia was talking about Tia was talking about uh, Cam's power puffs, right? And you, you, can't. you know how many times she's called me sugar mama? Do y'all know how many times? No, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just no. I can't help myself. Anyway, no. all right, back to this, back to this very serious topic. About, I'm like surprised uh, at you right now. Put my foot in it. <laughs> back to this very serious topic. Okay, so oh, no. all right. So here's the thing, right? I, Tia, you can't tell me I'm wrong. You you cannot tell me I'm wrong. You know I'm saying like you know, y'all know I'm right. Y'all know I'm right. No anyway, comment. <laughs> no comment. No. So comment. I would listen. I would agree that the you know younger women are moving very differently, and maybe, maybe I maybe in their minds like they feel happy at that point in time, right? Like when they're much younger. I would agree with that. I think if we're talking about if we're talking overall, though, uh, we're seeing more women on anti uh, antidepressants, um, you know, like alcohol consumption increasing, all types of things, right? And obviously, correlation does not imply causation, right? So these are just you know correlations, but still, I think that tells us something about our society. And in in my opinion, I think even so, even the the um, even the example that cam took about the older generation that's you know getting divorced um i think that actually more so makes the point than goes against it because you know a, a lot of the older generation that's getting divorced today like a lot of times they're getting divorced were very like superficial things that they would not you know or things that they would have not gotten divorced for in the past right and and they probably lasted you know like I've personally noticed, again, I don't know what the data on this is. Um, in fact, that would be interesting research, but just from like, um, you know, observations, I've observed that a lot of the older people that are getting divorced, you know, they still manage to make it through 20 years, right? They still manage to make it through 20 years or, you know, 30 years or whatnot. And then it's like, they're, they're deciding at some point, you know, in their um, late forties or fifties to actually, um, to, to actually basically get get divorced because they want to go out there and see what's out there for them, thinking that the grass is greener or that they have more options. But I, in other words, I think that only makes the point further in that they're able to last a, a decent amount of time based on the old standards. But once you know, you, you know, we're in this new world now, um, things are different. And I, in my opinion, um, there's a number of reasons for this, right? I, I think for me, the number one reason, in my opinion, is is the lack of shame. Right. And this is something I talk to my dad about a lot. You know, I've talked to my dad about this a lot. Right. Because I think that I think there's like I think there's a need to bring shame back to society in general, not just women, not just I'm talking about both men and, and both male and female. I think there's a need to bring shame back, because mm -hmm. when you think about it, we live in a society today where they're literally trying to get rid of shame. And very explicitly, you know, um, there was a video I sent to Cam yesterday. Right. There's like this group of women. Um, on I forgot which channel, I think it's not Jubilee. It's one of these cut. the cut. Okay, yeah. These group of women went on a show to talk about their body counts. Oh right? God. like literally, no. they went on a show, like no, seriously, they went on a show to <laughs> literally like expose, like stand in the line and talk about their body counts. And you know, when you really like let that sink in, you're you're like, damn, we're fucked. You know what I'm saying? Because when a group of women feels so comfortable to go on a show and just talk about their body count, right. Um, that tells you that we're, I mean, society is going downhill. When we have terms like slut shaming, you have a term called slut shaming, which is literally uh, uh, like you, somebody calling somebody a slut now, you're, you're the one being uh, uh, shamed. If, like I'm talking about somebody who's actually behaving like a slut, right? Somebody whose actions make her a slut. If you call her a slut or if you call her anything or if you treat her any way that makes her feel like you're, you know, slut shaming her. Right, you're in the wrong. Whereas the society of the past, you know, those types of women, right? Even though I mean they still existed, you still had you know hoes, you still had prostitutes, you still had all of that, but they knew that most of society didn't really fuck with them. Mm -hmm. Right? They knew that. They knew that most of society looked down on them, and and they knew that their families would disown them. 
They knew that they, et cetera, et cetera. They knew this. And so, and so because of that, it's either they decide to not go that route, right? A lot of younger women decide to not go that route. And those that did, they stayed in their place knowing that, okay, this is who I am. And by the way, you still, I mean, we're talking about old times, but you still see this in um, certain cultures throughout the world today, right? You still see women, you know, who be like, or who are permi uh, prom uh, promiscuous, like you still see those women, you know, they can't walk with their heads high. With their, you know, with their heads uh, held high, they can't, because society and you know, in in um, where they live, like you know, sh you know, will shun them. But here in America and just in the West in general, we're trying to like we're going completely opposite direction. I mean, we're going downhill where we're trying to make all the things that should not be okay okay. So in my opinion, that's part of the reason right there is that we've gotten rid of shame, and so we've made and then and then on top of getting rid of shame, we're moving into a world where. Uh, we're actually we're already in a world where we want to make it so that there are no rules, right? There's no rules, no standards. Everything goes, right? And I mean, this spans from everything from you know when we talk about gender identities and pronouns and all that stuff to just people's actions, right? Well, everything is okay. Everything is okay. There's no rules, no standards. And then if you happen to be the person fighting for standards and rules, you're the bigot. You're the person who's quote unquote stuck in the past. So it, it's a very upside down world that we live in. Um, but go ahead, Jedi. But no, but I just want to be careful with that because like even then when we turn to her slash shaming and everything, I mean, we have to understand the context when it's in where it came from and also how people are using it to feed the narrative saying that, oh, well, it was wrong. Some people are just thinking that just because you have more than one sexual partner and you're a female, therefore, then that, that's refers to you as a slut. And not necessarily. She true. is. Right. But <laughs> anyway, I was like, that's, like, that's the point. That's when, when we're hearing these things uh that point some people might be could have some reservations of thinking like oh if you're thinking that oh we should be calling that because people use it maliciously right but talking about bringing shame i wouldn't use the word talk about shame more about accountability saying that there was a certain thing of like our honor and you want to say that you use we use terms back in the old days of like hey you bring this on to your family if you you know you basically are are uh disrespecting you know yourself more importantly disrespecting your body if you're you know and this goes to both the men and women right when we're as men, when we're giving our seed as freely as dove with water, and we're not actually having anything stable and uh, or in our foundation, i.e., a family, in you know, with uh, with the wife and, and that which breeds legacy. So th th that's the thing that we're, I think what JB is coming from is that right. We need to bring that sense of you no. Know, what is you know? What is your honor? What's your identity that you feel that you, you have something to stand on, and not because oh well, I'm free, I can do whatever I want. Again, that's being you being prideful, being full of yourself. And then we always have in this culture, we're promoting this whole thing about self love, which I understand. We get that, you know, you should, you know, you should treat yourself like you care about yourself and everything. But there's a difference from self love and being full of yourself, right? So when, so with that thing being full of yourself, you're thinking that you're all that and everything, and then no, and anybody you get in a relationship, well, uh, you know, they just can't, they can't, you know, uh, take my standards, whatever. Instead of realizing, hey, what am I doing? If I'm having this consistent uh, results that I'm not, li that I'm not liking. Then what am I doing? What are my my choices? How am I actually putting myself in this environment where this person I'm attracting is not the person that I want? And are, are you breeding that? Are you putting something out there that's like giving you the, the the image that oh yeah, if I'm with this girl, yeah, I know I know what this is about. Nothing serious, you know. That again for a guy, like yeah, he's not here, not trying to get married or anything. Yeah, I don't know how to mess with him. That's the thing. I think a lot of us again we lack self awareness, and more importantly, we don't give a damn about our own self image. You know, talk to the screw ethic. I'm like our own self image as an individual. Like, hey, what is your name? You have a name out there on college campuses. We know some folks who have been around. We know their names from freshman year all the way to senior year. And so, and people are okay with that. But you can say that just to brush it off. But it's only a defense mechanism. Once you go back to your room, and then only you have only have you to sit with yourself and realize, hey, am I actually happy? Well, how like um, my name being perceived out there. And only you have to, you know, people can talk about you to the day is blue, you know, all day. But if you are contributing to that narrative, you only got yourself to blame for that. So I agree, Jedi. I think I hold up. So I agree with you, right? But I think on the shame thing, though, um, for like the way I think about the shame thing, like, okay, so I there's accountability, right? And then there's shame, right? And I think both are necessary. Right. I think accountability is obviously necessary, and I th but I think shame is also necessary um, because we, again, because we live in a world where we're trying to get rid of shame, 
that I don't, I don't even like think in other words, in other words, let me put it like this. Nah. I think shame would help um with the accountability equation, if that makes more sense, right? Because the more okay, I take this example all the time, right? So I'm gonna take it again. I think this example all the time. One of the reasons why I move the way I move is because fundamentally I feel like I have this um I feel like I have this duty to my family and specifically my father because he gave me his last name. Right. Right. That's one of those things when I talk to people about that, it's very amazing. It's a very interesting because I, I think a lot of people don't really think about it that deeply, but I do. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that he gave me his last name and to me, he's one of the most excellent role models I could have ever had in my life. I don't ever want to bring shame to him. Right. And so I move a certain way because I would never, you know, what's crazy Jedi, or I guess to, 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 to all of y'all, like, you know, when I think about this, right, if I were to get myself in some trouble and I were to get locked up, you know, I would be less upset about being locked locked up than me just disappointing my pops. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. that that's that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here is that for me, that 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 level of like shame that I know I would bring to him. Right. That to me is 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 so important. And I think because. Mm -hmm. Like today we're trying to, especially on top of that, especially with like the the whole, you know, so-called victim Olympics where everybody's a victim, everybody. So it's like not only everybody's a victim, but also they have no accountability for their actions. Right. Um, they have no accountability. And then if you, you know, try to, you know, uh, make them see what they've done wrong, then that's shaming. And then you're wrong for that as well. So I, I, to me, I think both are necessary. I think you need I think we need to bring uh, both back. Um, and on a personal level, I agree with you in terms of like looking in the mirror. Um, you know, I practice a form of like accountability that's like that I consider extreme accountability, right? Like mm -hmm. the first, the first person I blame for anything that goes wrong in my life is me. You know what I'm saying? That's it. The first yeah. person I blame for anything that goes wrong in my life is me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and I and I and I practice that like in probably in, in its most extreme form. Cam is on the panel. She'll tell you. you know what I'm saying she'll tell you. She could probably take so many examples of this, right? Like. I, I have no business blaming others. Now there are scenarios where it's outside of your control. You couldn't really, you know, and that, you know, that, that, I guess in the end, you could end up pointing the finger back at somebody else. Right. But you should start within and because you can't listen, we're not shouting out any beards over here. Okay. Cause I got a struggle beard. See, they shouting out Jedi with his Listen, I I don't appreciate Hi, it. Bro, who, who, said, who, said right now. who said that? Hi, Janae. Oh, thank you. Hey, thanks, yeah. Janae. Janae talking about beards. Like, Cheeky, you see what's going on, bro? Like, like a Jedi went and got himself a lace front beard, like 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 logic. <laughs> and now, <laughs> like logic, you know what I'm saying? And now, and now, okay. Anyway, um, I don't want to just ramble, but I, I think y'all get my point. Is that I think shame is necessary, and I think you know accountability is necessary. Um, even but if see, you don't that's practice, the thing. go ahead. Yeah, the thing is, I don't think that shame is going away. I think it's just been re-engineered, right? So transphobic is a word used to shame. Um, patriarchy, well patriarchy, patriarchy man, or, or a, a, a what is it? Cisgender male uh, is, I heard a, that is today. a word what used is to that? shame. This it means you were born I I was in the gender that you identify. It means you're normal. It means you're normal. Right. That's it what it means. means. It means I'm like, genuinely, I heard that today. I was like, wait, what is that? It means you're normal. Listen. Okay. <laughs> no, but seriously, right. this means that you're not to be disrespectful. I'm just like, I, I didn't know what that was. Like, right. What else? White guilt is is right. shame. No, and Chiki, listen, that is an excellent point. point. Yeah. That that's an excellent point, Chiki. Is that shame has not gone away? Gone away. Instead, it it's turned around where it's like it's they, right. they're shaming the people who are who should like. <laughs> that's very funny actually the people who should be shamed right are the ones actually using shaming as a weapon to shame you for shaming them right 